how do I go about the common question, well, how can God be both all-knowing and all-loving? He can't be both or else he knows bad things will happen and just lets them happen. Uh, these are, um, there's two levels on which to answer this. One is, a, is the very personal level of somebody who's actually going through suffering at the time, and then there's people who just throw this out as an intellectual question. Uh, and so it really kind of depends who you're talking to and, and what they're going through at the time. But generally speaking, what I would say, first of all, is that it doesn't do you any good to say that there is no God. So, so if, if you're stressed out because God is omniscient by definition and God is love by definition, but you see that there is suffering in the world and you say, well, there must not be a God, uh, it doesn't help you one bit. In fact, it puts you in a bigger pickle. Uh, and those who study this, those who have rejected God or who believe that God is no longer interested in his creation, uh, existential philosophers have come to the conclusion that you may as well just kill yourself because there's no reason for living. Uh, and then they work backwards from there and they say, but you probably shouldn't kill yourself. We don't know why, but it doesn't seem like you should. And so let's try and find some meaning or some purpose to life uh, that keeps us from killing ourselves and helps our fellow human beings, even though there's really no reason to do that. And so, so the, what you have to realize is that getting rid of God doesn't help you uh, at all. Um, the other r real r uh, argument here is that uh, if there's a God, and there is, has he spoken to us through the Bible? Uh, and if he has, then all that we can know about him or need to know about him is revealed in Scripture uh, by the Holy Spirit and through Jesus Christ. And uh, like we saw this past Sunday, uh, when Jesus returns in his second coming, the crowd shouts out, faithful and true. And, and what we take that to mean is that God has been faithful to provide a way of salvation for lost human beings, uh, and it is the true way, the only way. And so my answer to this would be that if you're going to have human beings at all with free will, uh, then this is the way it plays out because th this, is, this is God's best way of working out uh, your salvation uh, and, and saving a, a lost race. Uh, and uh, there's no other plan but his son coming and, and sharing in our suffering and dying and raising from the dead and, and uh, offering us eternal life. Uh, and the fact that it took thus far about 6,000 years for this plan to work out just speaks uh, of, of how difficult it is in one sense to work with the human heart. Uh, and, and so, is there suffering in the world? Yes. Is it God's fault? No. He created a perfect universe, but he gave man free will. And people like say, oh, yeah, you blame everything on free will. And you know what? Yeah, <laughs> we do. Because God said, I'm going to create a being uh, who is free to love me or to not love me. Because God being love, he cannot force love. Love cannot be forced. Uh, and so, the only alternative to uh, not to, to what the Christian believes uh, is existentialism, really, ultimately, where you just might as well kill yourself, uh, and, and that doesn't seem to ring true with most people. Most people have a sense of eternity in their hearts, that they were created for something greater, uh, and, um, and that greater is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Thank you.